All right, we are live. Hello and welcome, Karen. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Laura, for having me. I'm super excited to chat with you today. Fantastic. Yes, everyone, this is Karen Tyndall, and she is on because she is an advocate for balanced doctors, right? Yeah, that's that's me. So I have my own company, which is called balancedoctor.com. And I help dentists, physicians and healthcare and dental professionals who are super busy in their daily lives. And I think we all know what that feels like. But I want to help those people who want to reclaim a little bit of balance in their lives so they can still be professionally successful. But at the same time, the important bit to me is for them to thrive personally. Um, because we spend so much time at work that that can take too much of our attention away from everything else. So I help those people who want to just live the life they want now rather than putting it off, because I'm sure you'll agree, Laura, lots of people say, oh, I'll do that when X, Y, and Z happens, or I'm going to do that once I've reached whatever status in my career. So, But I want to help people realize that they can have that the life they want now rather than in the, in the future. Yeah, that's awesome. And what a better place to be. I'm so happy that we connected and Duffy connected us. She just that's knew good. that we would hit it off and we did. We had a phenomenal conversation. And um, But as you can tell, Karen is not from the United States. She yeah. is from, and we just had this conversation, so I hope to say it correctly yeah. now, Yorkshire. Yep, perfect. United Kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. And she actually did her training there. So she got her um, uh, Bachelor of Dental Surgery degree with honors from Newcastle University. And then your postgrad from the University of Oxford. Yes, that's good. And so the education for a dentist is different in the UK than it is in the United States a little bit. Can you just explain how your educational process, how you became a dentist and what was that like? Yeah, certainly. So the main difference is, and this is like a whole college experience difference to start off with, when you finish school, so you've seen you at school and you go to college, in England we call that we're going to university because the college sort of structure doesn't work, but we go to college at age 18 and that is where we choose which profession, degree we want to do because we go straight into doing a bachelor's degree at age 18. So at age 18, I went to dental school and that was in the year 2000, in the year 1995. And in the year 2000, I qualified as a dentist just a couple of days short of my 23rd birthday. So I was just still 22 years old. Basically, when you look back at it, I was a baby dentist at that <laughs> point in time. Um, and then you start your postgraduate training doing dentistry in whether you're going along a hospital route or whether you want to work as a family dentist. So you get to be a dentist a lot quicker by doing that in the United Kingdom than here, watching people do their first four year college degree and then get then choosing to go on to do dentistry or medicine or something like that. So yeah, I was I was out there in the real world doing dentistry from a very young age. Wow, that's that's really fun. And then you found that you really enjoyed orthodontics. Yeah, well, I was I was very lucky that I started off working as a family dentist to start off with. Um, and orthodontics was probably something which was very far from my mind. It was something when I was at dental school that I just I didn't see the excitement in orthodontics. I just want, I wanted something more exciting than that. But after I'd had my first daughter. I then we were moving back to be close to my, my family and I was thinking, what could I do? And I saw a job advertised in orthodontics where you would be trained whilst you worked. And it was just too good an opportunity to turn down. And I'm so pleased I took it because I ended up working with the most incredible mentor who I stayed there for 12, 13 years before moving to the United States and he taught me everything I knew about orthodontics. And it turned into the fact that I actually have a passion for straightening teeth and creating. For me, it was the creating smiles on people. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's where whatever I choose to do. And now I am 
the professional life coach in that capacity, but I still help people create smiles, but just in less of a practical hands-on way with the teeth and more with how they live their lives and helping them in that way. Oh, I love how you make that circle. That's that's a yeah. great way. Yeah, that's really awesome. And so you you have two daughters. I do. Yeah. And and you were a busy dentist while you were having kids. And so you were really trying to figure out this this work life balance. And it, at first it probably was challenging. Is that true? Was I think so. So I always worked before moving to the United States. I always worked. And in England, we are very fortunate that as women, we get a lot more maternity leave than ladies do here. Um, and most people in England have about a year off work after having a baby. Oh. I took six months because I was self-employed, which is still very long in comparison with what I see here in the United States. And I was then juggling work and baby, and everybody knows what that's like, whether you're a mum or dad, a grandparent, if you've got some small children in your life, you know what it's like to juggle all of these things. And I always looked at my friends who didn't work and almost felt a little bit jealous. Like I used to think, I wish that was me. I wish that I could have the time. And there's a lot of things that go into that, isn't there? There's mum guilt that you feel that you should be with your children more and you're at work. And I was very fortunate that we lived close to my parents and they were able to help me out with childcare. But there's always that thing in the back of your mind that you wish you could be doing it yourself. And there'd be things at school that you might not, performances that you might not be able to get to, even though I was pretty lucky that I could juggle most things. Um, and it was just doing that, combining the two, which I always did. And it just became part of normal life. And I didn't almost even think about the stress that it put on everything until the point that we moved to America. And that was in 2016. And I couldn't work because of visa restrictions. And then having that opportunity not to work gave me chance to see how life could be when, I mean, it wasn't a balance at that point, it was completely swung the other way. But when there was no work, what could I be like? And for the first time in my life, I felt like I did a really good job at being a mum. And I was always there for everybody and I was on top of everything. And it would be nice that we didn't have long lists of things that needed to be done on an evening because both myself and my husband have been at work we were able to get it done I was able to do it during the day so I was able to experience the other side of this balance that wow look what I could have and that made me really think that isn't it sad that so many of us go through day-to-day -day life one maybe not even having experienced what it's like to have a complete change from going into work and I was fortunate to be able to have that experience Mm -hmm. but then wouldn't it be great if I could help people be able to create some more of that balance so they could enjoy parts of both rather than hi I'm Karen I'm an orthodontist and that was my main that was my professional identity and that's a huge part of who you are is your professional identity mm -hmm. um to then leave that and I lost my professional identity and that's a that's a whole nother story about what that's like to lose that identity but I then became Kate and Isabel's mom and Josh's wife. So I was defined by my relationships to other people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. but wouldn't it be nice if you could mix the two together mm -hmm. and I can help parents and busy dentists and dental professionals be both rather than just be one or the other? Right. Yeah. You know, that's, I think that's so common for women and I feel like you can feel like you're doing really great at your professional life and then your family life suffers, or you can put a ton of focus into your family life and your professional life suffers. And, and that was always a struggle that, that I had was where is that balance? And then throw in that third spoke of the wheel, which is you, right? Yeah. And, you know, you have to take care of you too. And so um, I think that just is such an interesting journey that you've been on that has led you to want to help women figure this out before it's too late. Yeah. And like a lot of clients, when I speak to them and they're, 
they're always justifying it will be okay when this happens or I just need to get my business up to this point or when I get an associate in to work with me then I will be able to and it's and it's I just I just find it so hard to listen to that they're, they're, they're putting life on hold mm -hmm. and waiting for something to happen and pretty much you can guarantee it doesn't change because you let's pretend you get another associate in to work with you and then you're even busier because there's two of you seeing the work and it's then even harder to step away even though that was your original plan mm -hmm. to step away from that so by working with my clients we we look at what their values are what their beliefs are um in relating to work and what they want to achieve and we can then help together we can craft something and it's all their work i mean that's the thing it's all coming from them i am not the expert on anybody's life whoever you with the expert on your life and you will be able to tell me what's best for you but by asking the right questions of my clients i then help them determine what it is they actually really want and is it realistic because if somebody said actually i just want to be the super mom and the super dentist and probably they are already super mom and super dentist right. or super dental hygienist or something like that. but they don't see that and they're, they're searching for something and they feel like they should be doing everything perfectly right oh yes the perfectly <laughs> Perfect. well we're we're bred to do perfect in dental school right it's all about and you know when we're talking you know less than a millimeter of measurement everything is we're bred for perfection and so um we're high achievers we've we've pushed ourselves and so yeah that that you're right we we're yeah. looking for that perfect everything yeah. and so i love how you say that it's all within each individual that that you you don't have a plan for them it's within them but you help them figure that out yeah so i really everybody has the wisdom within them already to know what it is they actually should be doing but in life we very rarely give ourselves the opportunity to sit down and really consider and reflect on what we're doing and how we're doing mm -hmm. and when you do that on your own it is very difficult to get a 360 degree view of your life because you're biased you're already in that situation and you're seeing something your way you might be able to ask your best friend or your partner or spouse how you should do something and these people are great resources in life to turn to when you need them but they are also involved in that situation as well and they are very close to it and it then becomes that their advice to you is almost guided by what they want even though they might even though not they're not being selfish but they are invested in this same decision mm -hmm. so that's why working with a coach is so valuable because i am on your team I am your cheerleader. I am there to help this happen for you. But I am not biased in any way as to what you're going to say the answers are. And I can ask questions and I like to challenge people about what they're saying. And like, is this really like, explain it to me, tell me more about it, really think it through. And that's where I think working with a coach is so valuable that you can have that opinion and somebody gave me a really beautiful analogy it's like imagine you are inside a water bottle one of these plastic ones that we shouldn't be using but or a glass a gl let's go with a glass jar let's be eco-friendly imagine you're in the jar and yeah well I can't see my own. so imagine we're in here but we, we can see out and we can see yep. what's going on but we can't read the label on the jar mm -hmm. so it takes a coach to be able to come in and I can read the label on the jar clearly and give it back to you and say, well, from what you're saying, it sounds like you need more time in your day to get these things done. How we get, where are we going to get that time from? How are we going to get that back? Um, because there is only a certain amount of time in the day. And quite often when you think I'll make time, something has to give to be mm -hmm. able to get that extra time. So I can help you work out where is that time coming from? Mm -hmm. That's just one example of, you know, how you would, how a coach would help. 
Yeah. You know, that's, that's a great, I, I love that analogy. And I also love, you know, I've worked with a coach, I've worked with several coaches, but one thing that was when the very first time I had a coach that completely threw me off was our first conversation. I asked her about her life and she said, no, we're not <laughs> here to talk about me. We're here to talk about you and let's cut to it. And I just thought, wow, you know, when you go to a friend or you go to your spouse, half the time you're talking about the weather or the kids or an activity. And by the time you really get to what you want to talk about, oh, it's time to go. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Whereas with a coach, from the second you start, you are talking about what the important stuff that you need to talk about. And, and you, yeah. And you as the client, you are the priority in that situation, which and as you say, in normal conversation day to day, that doesn't happen. We would feel selfish if we were to sit down and talk with a friend and it was only about me and you would find that relationship would be out of balance and it probably wouldn't exist because people like to be heard and people, but in this situation, it's unique that this is your time. This is your time to talk. And I will just guide you through the chat and ask questions and reflect things back to you. But me like guiding you slowly, some people liken it to, it's a bit of a dance where the coach dances with the client and I follow you where you go. And then sometimes it can be more like I like to think of it as like, you've got somewhere you want to go on a straight road, but you can't get there on your own and you keep zigzagging off. And then I can just nudge you back in and then we go this way and then I'll nudge you back that way. And then you keep going down this road with me, like just keeping you in that center point, but and then you get to the goal at the end of it. That's great. I, I love that. So when you came to the United States, you came because your husband, um, got a job here, right? Is yes. it, or a transfer here, right? Yeah. yeah. And then you couldn't practice dentistry. Was that a shock? Um, I knew that that would be the case. Yeah. Um, I'd always known that if as a United Kingdom resident, if you wanted to come and work in the United States as a doctor or a dentist, you would have to do your some more exams. Um, and that's that's just the, that's just the way it is that you would have to do more exams mm -hmm. to do that. Well, I live in Bentonville in Northwest Arkansas, which is the home of Walmart World Home Office, and that's why we're here because my husband works for Walmart, and there is no dental school near me. So, mm -hmm. to start off with, I didn't have a visa to work, so I couldn't work. There was no dental school here, so that came a time where I just wasn't working to start off with and we were just going to see and the plan was is that we were going to go back to England we were here for two years and then we would go home and four and a half years later we're still here we've bought a house I've got a dog I don't he's asleep on the floor next to me now and life is very settled and we really enjoy our life and it's fantastic but then there became a time when I knew that I had to be doing something more um, to start off with, being the full-time mum was, like I explained earlier, it was fantastic and I was able to give it my full attention. But I started to get bored and I didn't really even realise what it was to start off with. And I tell a story about how small things that normally in the course of when I was at work, like emptying the dishwasher, folding the laundry, doing those sort of things, they would just get done as part of my day and I wouldn't noticed that I was even doing them they would just happen and those tasks started to become more onerous to me and I would like oh I've got to empty the dishwasher and I used to have to motivate myself by setting a timer on my phone to say I've got five minutes come on empty the dishwasher get it done so now and I I had the insight to think come on what what is going on here like this isn't like you why why are these things becoming a bigger deal than they should be I was also becoming the go-to expert in my house for things that like you'd ask, oh, what's mummy good at? Oh, well, mummy's really good at doing the laundry, tidying up, cut, you know, doing the garden, things like that, that I was like, gosh, I used to be this successful person who had a profession and I used to be the orthodontist who straightened teeth. And now I'm great at getting the laundry back to the correct bedroom. Mm -hmm. So I sat down and thought, what, what is going on? What, what is the issue here? And I actually thought I'm bored. And I know that's a really, that's a buzzword. I'm bored. But when I explored it a little bit more, it's like, 
I missed being an expert at something and I missed being in a position where I got to work with people and I got to share what I'd learned with people. So then I was looking for something to do that wasn't dentistry. Um, and I came across um, becoming a professional life coach. And I just loved the idea that I could help people by talking to them. And I think to start off with, I thought incorrectly, before I really researched it, life coaches gave advice because I thought, hey, being a dentist or an orthodontist, what have I done or what do we both do in work every day? You talk to people, but at the end of the day, you give them your professional opinion as to what they should be doing. Mm -hmm. So this idea that I could have a profession where I didn't give people advice, but I could help them was really intriguing. Like, how does this work? And you'll know what it's like, Laura, to be coached. And when you have been coached, it's almost like a magic trick that by somebody asking you the right questions, it unlocks the puzzle, unlocks the puzzle. And you, and it's that aha moment of that's it. Like, it's so simple. Why did I never see that before? So we have someone saying hi to us. Sorry. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the interesting thing is that like I, I found this passion for helping people, but without telling them what to do. So it was completely different from working in dentistry that where I would advise people that I think these are your options. What would you like to do? So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. So in your coaching experience now, because you, you your whole platform is advocating balance, work-life balance, professional balance, personal balance. What do you find are the biggest challenges your clients are having? What is, what, what's the, what are the hot button topics? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think for people, the first one is probably they, everybody says yes too often. Oh. Um, because we're in a caring profession. And I think as we've been in that profession, we want to help people. I think that's within our nature in healthcare to be that person to help. Yeah. And that's so inbuilt within us that anybody asks people to do anything and we want to please and we want to say yes. And I, I was very much like this as well. I never wanted to say no to anybody oh, Yeah. Um, that you just then take more on. But what we don't realize is that each time we take something more on, we're either something else is going to have to give because we have a finite period of time. Yeah. So for a lot of people, it's learning to say no mm -hmm. to all the extra things added on. And one example I would think to share with you would be when I first moved here, my girls were at school for about 10 weeks before the summer vacation. And during the summer vacation, I was approached by school to say, hey, would you like to be the fifth grade parent coordinator? Now, I would have, I, in me being helpful, yes, of course, I would mm -hmm. love to be this coordinator. What does it involve? And maybe I was a little naive and they saw me as somebody who was an easy target that I was new and I would do this. But they told me, oh, it's fine. It's easy. You just have to um, communicate between the parents. And if there's information that needs to go out, I was like, I can do that. That's fine. I'm good at communicating. Little did I realize, and this is a very American thing, that I <laughs> have to organize parties for Halloween, which is the biggest American tradition. You've put a British girl in charge of Halloween. Like, <laughs> it's just, it just doesn't work. So, I had Halloween, Christmas, I could do Christmas, but I can't do it in the flamboyant way. And I love how Americans celebrate their holidays in a big start. It's, it's fabulous. And that's what I love about being here. Christmas, Valentine's Day, I've never done a Valentine's Day party. And all these parties like lined up would just come. And I was like, what have I signed myself up for? <laughs> and it caused me stress and I had to fundraise and I'd never done anything like that before. I was successful at what I did and I pulled it off. But what should I have done at the beginning? Like I said, yes, because I felt that I should be doing it. And mm -hmm. that this word comes in all the time, isn't it? What we should be doing. Mm -hmm. And I think really after that point, I sat down and really thought, no, you have to be kind of more strict about what you say yes to. And it has to really do something for you to say yes. It, it has to be something, A, you really enjoy. It's yeah. going to give you a lot of pleasure to be doing it. 
Mm -hmm. um, because by this point in our careers, we're dentists, we're, you know, we've, our time is precious. Mm -hmm. And unless something is going to be of benefit to you, or you feel so strongly in support of a cause that you are going to help, Mm -hmm. um, I volunteered at the children's hospital and that was something I really felt strongly that I could help and give, give my time to that. Mm -hmm. So that was worth it to me because it brought me joy to do that. But really be like saying no to things when people just ask, can, oh, could you just, oh, would you be able to? Mm -hmm. And I think the thing is, is not to apologize for when you can't do something. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of the time somebody said, oh, Karen, would you help us, um, put you know set up for whatever's going on at this event could you help put out the chairs I would be inclined to say yes I'll help because I want to be helpful mm -hmm. um, but I actually know that my Wednesday is going to be super busy and that by doing these chairs it's going to put me back on everything else that I'm trying to get done mm -hmm. so at that point in time I should say and be honest say thank you so much for thinking of me because people only ask you to do things because they think you're capable mm -hmm. Thank you for thinking of me. That was really kind of you. Unfortunately, I'm unable to help on this occasion. And don't make up a reason why you're unable to help. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, I can't help because I'm doing this. It doesn't, it, it's just, I'm really sorry. I'm not able to help right now. And that can help at work and in professional situations as well. And mm -hmm. when you get to a point in your career where you don't have to climb that career ladder anymore, it changes. So if you're training and people or somebody offers you the great opportunity of, hey, would you like to write this paper with me? That might be harder to say no to because that could be the step that you need. Mm -hmm. So it's appreciating that. But once you've got to the position where you want to be to then if somebody asks you, hey, would you like to co-author on this paper with me? Maybe now isn't the right time to do that. Maybe it's not in your goals for the year to be writing a paper and maybe you have a different goal. And by accepting their what they're saying will take you away from the path that you really wanted to take. So again, it's thank you for thinking of me. That was really kind. I really appreciate the thought, but unfortunately it's not aligning with my goals this year to be doing That's that. It's just being honest. And I've had people that have come back to me after we've talked about this in coaching and they're so excited or drop me a message or whatever and say, Hey, do you know what? I said no yesterday to somebody and it was so empowering like to be able to do that, I felt great because I felt like I hadn't been rude. I hadn't not helped, but I acknowledged mm -hmm. that they wanted me to help, but then I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's awesome. Like You're a big advocate of setting boundaries, aren't you? Just yes. I think that's in, really in everything. Yeah. And I love how you, you phrase it so that they, you know, you're thanking them, you're acknowledging them. And I also like how you say at this time, you know, so that they know that they can still come to you maybe with another request in the future, you know, that you're not like shutting the door completely. Yeah. I think that's, for me, is really important that people will know that that's a lovely comment. What a concept. It's honest. That's it, isn't it? It's honesty. It's rather than pretending I can't do something for whatever reason. But right. it's so important to be able to say no clearly, set those boundaries. And then boundaries are really, I mean, if you look at the word boundary, it kind of implies that something is protected and kept enclosed. But actually, by creating a boundary, it is your biggest gate to freedom because mm. it gives you the freedom to do something else. Mm -hmm. So by protecting what's important to you, keeping it in a bubble, and that's your time, yeah. you then gain the freedom because you can then actually get to do the things that really are important to you. So maybe instead of setting the chairs out for an event on an evening, maybe actually by saying no, that actually enabled that I was able to get home and have dinner with my family. Mm -hmm or it gave me the time that I could actually get to go to the gym or do some exercise. And I think that's, people think, oh my gosh, that feels really selfish to put myself first because mm -hmm. we tend not to think of ourselves in that way that I, I am important mm -hmm. to look after me, but really that's where you've got to put yourself is to say, I am important. And if, you know, going to the gym for an hour is going to help me reset and feel more grounded, then that's really important to be in that to say, to say no to the other things so you can look after yourself. Right, right. Well, and I think that that's so important. Like in dental school and in professional school, uh, we learn to uh, 
manage our time to prioritize. You know, we have this exam, we're going to study for that first, and then we're going to do our lab work. And then, you know, we, we figure that all out, but then we get out into life and we, it's sort of like we lose, we lose that structure. And we have been, I, I agree with you, we've been on that professional ladder saying yes to things because it's advanced our career or it's helped us. But yet at some point we have to hone in on what our vision is, what our true why is so that we can make those, we can prioritize what those yeses are and what those yeah. ones are, you know? Yeah, it's so it's so important. And that's what I like helping people with is that let's work out what's really important to you. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of when I first meet a client, one of the first things we do is we do an exercise where we look at your values. Mm-hmm. Um, and people find it really enlightening to be able to give them the opportunity to sit down and say, we might look, say, in terms of general life, or there might be a specific area that you want to focus on, whether it's work or family, but let's work through. And I've got this list of all of these values, and I'd ask people to pick various ones out, and then we'll talk them through and actually come up with a list that are your definitive top 10, top 12. Some people find it difficult to limit the number they can choose because there's so many, and they're all good. None of them are bad. But right. like your definitive list of your values and then – my clients can go away with the list and some of them like laminate it and might keep it in their nightstand or keep it in their purse or whatever. Because quite often in life, when something is not going your way, it's not turning out like you wanted it to, maybe you're not happy, something. It's probably because you're not aligning with one of your values. Mm -hmm. To be able to go back to that, maybe you've had a really difficult day, something went wrong at work or whatever, to go back and pick that list out and say, actually, what on today what happened today that wasn't on this list and you're like oh yeah one of my values is that I really appreciate honesty and there was somebody who for me wasn't being honest today with me and that's why this scenario didn't work out and I think you can use this list of values in so many different parts of your life whether you are recruiting staff to work at your practice or whatever and I mean staff and getting them in your practice we all know that it's a such an important thing to get the right people in your team Mm -hmm. and there's there was a a statistic that I heard recently that each time you replace and turn over a member of staff on your team the amount of time that you've put into these people and the training and everything it's approximately eighty thousand dollars per member of staff that you are going to replace in your team. So if you think about how many times a staff member turns over per year, even if it's just one, that is a huge amount of money. But if maybe before that point in time, we had had chance to meet and talk through and say, in relation to getting new people on my team, what what is it that I am looking for from these people? We can maybe help you pick people that will be more aligned to the values of your practice or you personally. And that's why it could be more of a success rather than just an $80,000 gamble. Mm-hmm. Well, and and knowing that helps you, like you said, in the future. So being able to be in alignment with your values and what's important to you, really, you can learn from that and it can create a much smoother future for you. Yeah, definitely. And then, I mean, as time goes on, I mean, life changes and it ebbs and flows and it's not just one set of values and that's your values forever. They at different points in your life. They may be different, Mm -hmm. but there are probably some core values which will always be with you. Mm -hmm. Um, And they are very individual to a person and then changing it depending on where you are in your life and what you're wanting at that point in time is you you then have the option. And this is something, this is an exercise that my clients take away and they can do it again and again and again. And I say to them, if there's something else that comes up, and we can't meet or you're busy, whatever, you can go through this with yourself, follow the same things that we did, and you can work out your values in relation to, I mean, one thing I remember was how does somebody organize Christmas or Thanksgiving? I think it was Thanksgiving. And their value was at Thanksgiving, they didn't want to be traveling around the country to go visit family. But that's what they always did. They always got (laughs) in the car and drove for eight hours to see their family. Well, 
already that that their value they need to so what we sat down and we worked out what their values were and we came to the conclusion that this person family was really important to them but they really wanted to wake up and go to sleep in their own bed on that day they didn't want to be in the car for hours and hours and so we were able to help design a thanksgiving for this dentist to be able to actually enjoy their time off rather than be spending it in the car and so you can you, you can put them into to use in any walk of life. That's awesome. That's fantastic. Well, speaking of travel, you love to travel. Tell me I some do. of your top top travel places, destinations. What, what I, do you have to I, share with us? I could overtake this Facebook video <laughs> for the next like <laughs> how many hours on places that I have been and things that I would um, recommend people go see. I have been very lucky to have been able to travel my whole life. My parents. Um, you know, I was fortunate that they took us places as children and we came and traveled around the United States and we've seen a lot of things. I think if I had to pick my favorite country to go visit in the whole world, it would be Italy. Oh. Um, and it's not just the incredible coffee, the gelato, the pizza, the pasta, the, the wine, the everything, but just the scenery and the uh, incredible history of the country um you could take me if i somebody said you're going somewhere tomorrow where do you want to go and that's providing we can get on a plane and fly away but i would be going to rome oh. um, to go to rome but we had one summer where we went on vacation to tuscany and i like finding unique things that are different and not run of the mill and i don't want i didn't want i wanted to avoid other british tourists on my trip. So I spent a long time finding, I found this incredible place. And I thought, yes, this is where we're going. And it was amazing. It was a farmhouse in Tuscany um, where everything was already sort of catered for. And there were lots of excursions that you could choose to opt in to do if you wanted, but you'd do them on your own. You didn't do them with a group. And it was so exciting. And we arrived, we were the only English family and every other family at this place was American. Mm -hmm. like, why are there so many Americans? Like I'm in the middle of Italy and like I'm surrounded by Americans. Um, and I made friends with one, one family who were there and they are still my friends to this day. And our first yeah. um, Thanksgiving in America back in 2016, they live in Houston. And uh, my friend Mandy invited us down there to spend Thanksgiving with her. But what I'd been is this place in Italy that I thought was a secret hidden gem was actually on one of Rick Steves' travel shows as somewhere to go <laughs> in Tuscany, which explains <laughs> why I was there. But it was absolutely incredible. And this place is called La Cretaiole in Tuscany. And it was so beautiful. Like it was oh. just an experience and a holiday, a vacation. I, I call a vacation a holiday, but it was like the a vacation of a lifetime, really. And my daughter, my youngest daughter, who was nine at the time, um remembers we went to a michelin starred restaurant where i got to cook with the chef and then we had like this private lunch with him and she still remembers that and we were talking about it just this morning in the car when i was taking her somewhere about how that was her favorite trip she's ever done she just oh. so i would be going back to italy at, in a heartbeat to go and eat beautiful food and have incredible experiences and just appreciate some of this in amazing history that's just been there for thousands of years and I just marvel at it and I love it. Awesome. That is amazing. I uh I have been fortunate to go to Italy myself and it is definitely I'd go back in a heartbeat too yeah. as well. So I yeah. Just, uh, yes. Awesome. I just, I just love finding something new each time you go to Rome they've dug up a new bit of ancient <laughs> that's just happened to pop up. So <laughs> Otherwise, it is amazing how old some of that stuff is. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. Love it. Yeah. So, all right. Well, we are kind of coming to the end here, but I want to make sure that everybody knows, first of all, where to find you. So we have your website going across yep. the bottom right now, yep. balancedoctor.com. I will also put all of this in the comments so that people can find you. And then on Instagram, you are Dr. Karen Balance Doctor. Yep, that's me. And then we also have a Facebook page that is Balance Doctor. You can yep. find her there. Okay. So, and she has, Karen has a, um, uh, a PDF. Is that what you describe yep. it? Your PDF is 
Eight Habits of Balanced Doctors. And so I'm going to put the link to that in the comments too. And be sure and check that out. That is a completely free resource that she, she has for you guys. And if you want to just give us a little synopsis of what they can expect when they sign up for that. Yeah, well, that is um, created for me with conversations with my clients. Mm -hmm. And these are things that people who have come to coaching and wanted to change things in their life, things that they have started doing as a result of coaching that are making them happy, balanced doctors um so it's actual real life anecdotes from people as to what they're doing now so maybe you already do some of these things maybe you don't maybe there's one or two that you'd like to add in but it's a list of things that are really simple to implement and that you can actually implement now so if you once you downloaded it you can read it through and say actually that's a really good idea i think i should ch start trying to do that um but it's from real dentists and physicians who have shared these things with me about what they're doing or things that we've come up with whilst we're coaching and I promise I don't overwhelm you with uh, newsletters or uh, adverts or anything like that I am very quiet on the email um, so your email address um, I do appreciate your like privacy and that email is your private inbox um, so I won't be bombarding you with a lot of other things um, but I'd love to share that with anybody who would like to be a happier more balanced doctor. Awesome. I will make sure that link is posted. And I would say everyone take advantage of that because yeah, this is real information coming from real people and real tips that you can use today yep. to start living a more balanced life. It works. Awesome. Thank you so much, Karen. I appreciate Thank your you time. Much. And yeah, and uh, keep keep showing up here at uh, Reclaim Your Balance and giving us your tips and uh, yeah. helping 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 us keep a more balanced life. We appreciate you. Thank you. I will. I'm, I'm currently writing a um, uh, self help not self help self care booklet, um, like a workbook. So that will be coming soon. So when that's ready, I will send the link everybody's way. Um, for something that people can be able to do at home. Awesome. That sounds fantastic. Thank you so much, and thanks everyone for being here. All right. Having Cheers. Me. You bet. Bye.